As the COVID-19 pandemic ravaged its way across the United States, many businesses experienced the overwhelming negative effects. Among those most negatively affected by the pandemic is the child care industry. With the National Association for the Education of Young People reporting a 67% decrease in enrollment, as well as an average of 300% increase in sanitation expenses nationwide, there's an extreme amount of stress throughout the industry. Well, my name is George Nixon, and I own five Kids Are Kids franchises. And we have been in business for about 25 years. And with the pandemic, it has made doing this child care industry very, very interesting. This year earlier when it was first announced, we were doing very well. We were taking care of about 800 to 900 children collectively between all locations. And then when the announcement of the pandemic came out and they originally asked for a 15 day uh, quarantine, stay at home type deal, uh, about 90% of our customers decided that they no longer were comfortable bringing their children to us, which in turn caused us to shut down for about eight and a half, nine weeks. We were not able to open back up until somewhere in the middle of May. And it was not because we had any government regulations that said we couldn't open, but the customers we had were not comfortable bringing their children back. There was some lack of faith in the industry to be able to uphold new precautions given the nature of children. Kids Are Kids does their best to maintain as much transparency with parents as possible so as to ease their concerns. So we are making sure that we're making extra phone calls, we're sending extra notes home to families, um, spending a little bit more time building that relationship with them since they are not coming into our buildings every day. Um, so that has been one of our biggest challenges to make sure we are maintaining that relationship so that all of our families do still feel comfortable with bringing their little ones to us every day uh, and in fact we had one mom who is a public school teacher who told us that it made her life so much easier that with all the other craziness going on one thing she did not have to worry about was where her children were going to be because she knew where they were and she knew that they were going to be safe so that was definitely a testament that we are adapting and we are doing the best that we can in all of these times so that we can all support each other. Despite their best efforts, there will always be a risk of transmission. At that point, the methods they use to address the known cases are their next line of defense in the industry. So, I, um, back in July, um, I did, my husband and I both ended up getting COVID, um, and so that was definitely um, a, an interesting experience being quarantined with our three crazy boys and my husband for um, a wonderfully long period of time. Um, but it, um, you know, not only was it us trying to, you know, make sure our kids were okay and be in the house and make sure that we're getting better, but it was also, you know, then worried about what's going on at school as well and did we expose anybody over there um, you know and just kind of trying to balance that um, was stressful and was difficult. Amazing. I think the biggest thing that we've all noticed and we've all kind of been affected by is how quickly when it does hit how quickly we have to um, handle any of the operations from a day to day whether it be contacting families and quarantining classrooms and cleaning um, so you know the first time we had a case that was reported, we did have to um, go through that, and so it was a big learning curve as to how we normally would handle just a general illness in a classroom. Um, so that's probably the biggest story, I guess, so to speak, that stands out to me. It is definitely a different way of handling a sick individual. Informing other parents about cases and more thorough sanitation efforts are a huge relief for parents. They're only a small part of the precautions that kids or kids will be using in the future of child care. I think it's going to be an interesting journey as far as how we take care of children in the future from the standpoint of right now we're asking the children that are old enough to understand to wear a mask to wear a mask. We're asking all of our staff members to wear masks also. Not because that's a government mandate or rule or reg or whatever for our industry, but the customers have uh, expressed their concerns and asked us to follow that recommendation. Uh, also, in an effort to reduce the uh, 
possible transmission of the, of the disease, the parents used to be able to bring their children into the building, into the classroom, have face-to-face -face meetings with the teachers twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening when they picked up and dropped off, but that has since ceased. We have had to switch gears and go to a drop-off and pick-up where parents no longer enter the building. Uh, we go outside and do some temperature checks, ask some other questions in relation to the, the pandemic, and then we bring the children into the building ourselves, and then we take the children out to them in the evenings. I uh, don't know when that will end or change. Uh, we get new guidance all the time, and it's, it just seems that it's, it's continuing to, to stay that way where customers, um, the recommendation is that they don't come in the, in the, in the building as much as they used to.